Okay, Dave here. How are you? I'm hoping we're streaming. Today is the 18th of February 2018, Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Now, what have we got here? I'm waiting to see what's happening here. Someone has just sent me a message. That's great. I'll have a look at that in a second. We are streaming. That's great. Uh, let me see. I'm going to quickly change one little thing here so that we haven't got the stream coming up and down. So we can have a little bit more. Close that. And there we go. Open this one up. There it is. And we have the chat. OK. Now, for people who have not watched the show or if you've recently subscribed to my channel, this is a very relaxed format that I do for this live stream. What we do is the first 10 minutes, maybe for the first 30 minutes even, there'll be a bit of a chat. We'll have a chat with people on the, in the chat session. So you can use the chat board there if you want to and type in some interesting stuff. If you've got a project you'd like to share or if you've got animals that hang out in your shop, please send photos into me. My email address is Dave Stanton Fans, D-A-V-E-S-T-A-N-T-O-N-F-A-N-S at gmail.com. There's no AU after it, .com, remember. It's interesting, it's fascinating to see these pictures that come in, and some of the projects are very, um, very grand, and some of them are very simple, but I don't care. Send them in, you'll see today, we've got some of the projects from viewers that, uh, that one person, Michael Christopher, is uh, in a situation where he's a little bit disabled with getting around, so he makes smaller things, does pen turning, and he's made some interesting things this week as well. Um, another person we've had stuff, send stuff in today is uh, Phil Knight, and he's made a little roll around cart for his garage where he keeps his clamps hanging off the side, and we've got photos of those. And there might be some other things. Now, I normally read through the, this little sheet here. I have these little cheat sheets. First thing I do is check, and then we talk about interesting things from the week, which I will do. Now, the Path Dogs or the Path Super, Super Dogs video that I did uh, was released yesterday. I released it about 12 hours earlier than I normally do. Um, the reason being, I already had the thing built, so I wasn't chasing myself to try and have that extra time in the day to release the video. So I released it in the morning. Let me know what you think, whether you prefer it released in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening. The, now that I've probably said that, I'll probably end up, everyone will say, Dave, release at the same time you did today because it went quite well, uh, which is going to cut 12 hours out of my production time if I have to do that every week. Now, there's another thing about the videos. I try to get them out every week. Now, it's getting to a situation where I'm getting a whole lot more detail going into them. And whilst when I first got into YouTube, I had a whole lot of stuff that I could talk about. Now, as I'm going along, the, the, when, I, as, when I say that, I mean projects that I'd already built. So as I'm going along now, I'm having to actually build the projects and video it. And sometimes it's a bit restrictive to me because the projects I'm having to do are very small. Uh, if I do a review on something, well, that's pretty easy, like with the Path Super Dogs, that was pretty easy to do. And aren't they fantastic? Isn't Peter Parfit a smart man? And uh, thank you to UJK for sending those over to me. That's fantastic. I didn't even ask for them. I just, <laughs> they arrived in the mail. I thought, hello, what's this? So I thought, oh, well, I better do a video on them. Um, now, if you're out there and you want me to do a review on your things, well, that's fine. It's probably best to send me an email first uh, because I won't review absolutely everything. I have had some things come in and I've sent them back to the manufacturer. I said, I'm not going to do it. I don't like them. All right. Uh, okay, so then the, We've talked about the chat. Keep the channel afloat. Now, the way you, you can help me, you know, keep doing this for you every week is just below this video. If you've got a um, a laptop or a uh, or even a smartphone, if you hold your smartphone up in this orientation instead of this way, you'll find that there's stuff can be show more underneath it, and you can click that. It'll open up a little description box. And there'll be some links in there. I'm very uh, open about that. I don't try and hide the fact that there's some links there. Um, some of them are to Amazon. If they're to Amazon, I'm an affiliate. What happens there is if I'm if you order something through that link, you pay the same price as you would anywhere else, but the show gets a little bit of a consideration for it. So it helps out. Uh, next thing, next thing, next thing. So if you can do that, that's great. Uh, Japanese and Western source, what is the difference? That's going to be the topic for today, and that'll be fun. Uh, I've, I've used Western saws all my life. It's only in the last six years that I've been um, 
introduced, could you say, to Japanese saws. Uh, also, Phil Knight has asked me to let everyone know that there's going to be a tool meet on. Now, this is for, and I'll see if I can find this picture for you straight away. And I'm sorry I haven't done any uh, any chat with the chat here on the side, but this is the Sydney tool sale for the, the um, let me read this so I don't get it wrong. Uh, Sydney tool sale on Sunday, the 25th of February, 2018. So that's next Sunday at the Brick Pit at Thornley in Sydney. So this is where you go if you want to get a hold of old tools and you want to fix them up yourself. That could be quite good. I may make sure I'm coming back to this one here. There we are. Now, as I say, it's you can pick up things like this. Now, this is my 110. This is a lovely little plane. See, it's not lying. It says 110 there. <laughs> uh, it's a lovely little plane and whilst my father owned that. If I was to go along to this tool group, I would probably find things from deceased estates that these tools need a new home, someone to love them. <laughs> Doesn't that sound weird? Why? This is a sickness. I hope you realize this is a sickness and there is no cure. And the only cure is to buy more tools. <laughs> okay, what else we got? Um, okay, so next Sunday is Saw Stop Day at Carbon Tech across Australia. Now I will be, sorry, next Saturday, it's the 24th, I think. Uh, I'll be at the Auburn store in Sydney and I'll be doing the demonstrations down there. I'll do all the demonstration up to the point where I put the sausage through the saw and I've said to the manager down there, I'm gonna get you to do it because he's not a carpenter. He doesn't know anything about woodworking. He's an excellent manager, but I'm going to get him. He's wanting everyone to be more fluid and, and more, more knowledgeable about all the tools. And I thought, well, you know, if you're, you can't tell us what to do and then you not do it yourself. So I'm going to introduce him to, do, to doing that. So it'll be worthwhile coming along just to see the smile on my face while we get Steve to push this sausage through. I hope he doesn't pike out. Okay, so that'll be fun. Rock up, rock up there. I think we start about nine o'clock and finish around 12. So that'll be good fun. Um, all the other stores as well will be doing it, but I won't be there. Um, now also happy birthday to John Lafferty's mum who is turning 21. Now you're probably think, oh, and a bit. Sorry, I forgot that bit. <laughs> so uh, they're on vacation with the family near the beach, and uh, it's a bit of a bit of a uh, nice story. What happens is John's mum's on dialysis for kidneys, and to go on holidays is almost impossible because she, she needs to be in it near a dialysis machine three times a week. Now in New South Wales, I think they have three trucks that have dialysis machines in them and they cruise around the state and you can book a truck. So they, well, that's, that's what they did. They looked at their destination, they looked when the trucks were going through and they try and lined it all up and all the planets aligned and how good is that? So happy birthday to John's mum. And, 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 and the last, two more things, easy wood shop reference tools, measure without a tape. I'm gonna show you some of those things as well. Andy from um, Easy Wood Shop sent those things over to me. I did ask him because someone else had mentioned, Dave, you might want to have a look at these. So people do send things over to me and I'm happy to show them if I think they're worth it. And I think Andy's stuff is very, very nice. And I promised him that I'd have a little bit of a chat about it. And the weather, hasn't it been hot? I don't know, you guys in the Northern Hemisphere complain about it being cold, but this week, one day it was 110 Fahrenheit. Now I know there's a guy out there called Edward Neal who keeps on telling me, Dave, that's an average day for me in the desert. <laughs> well, not for me, buddy. I think when I get to around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm starting to think, you know, I don't want to do anything. All right, I'm going to jump in and read a little bit of the chat here. There is a truckload, as you can see. There is a heap. Okay, so basically it's good morning from everyone there from Canada, streaming well. Morning, Dave from Steve Orbank. Carl, greetings from Northern Kentucky. Uh, everyone from Asheville. Uh, Leroy Redding, g'day Ian, g'day Dave, and the many faithful followers. Now Ian refers to this as going to church, because <laughs> it's Sunday morning here, and that's his get out of jail from uh, having to do other things around the house. He says to his wife, I've got to go off to church now. Uh, I think there's a few people do that. Uh, Andy, hi, and Dave M, hello. Uh, I've been reading down through it. Morning all. Hey Dave from the UK. Uh, from Oregon. I uh, hope you're all well. 
from Copenhagen, Ireland. Great to see you. Michael, morning, Dave. I watched your sharpening video on the Carbotech bench grinder and you had a cover on one of the, over one end. Uh, what is the cover for? I don't remember that, Michael. I'll have to have a look into that. It could well be just a uh, something that was sitting up there, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it could also be just the, the card, the, the Perspex card. I'll have a look at that. Uh, John, here, there he is, morning, and Doug Marriott, morning all. Wow, we've got a truckload of people in today. Now, as I say, hang around because it's only the first 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to hook into the, the demonstrations pretty quickly today. Um, <laughs> Jackson, you rock. Thanks, buddy. So do you. Uh, anyone else? the audio not quite syncing syncing here in Australia is great okay you may find I've had to set the audio to 200 milliseconds advanced I've mucked around with as much as I can because I'm using the, the wireless mic here if the mic if I was using the mic on the camera in here you find perfect sync but the thing is you get a lot of echo as well because it bounces around the room. I find that this has been the best result I can get. So if you can put up with it, Leroy, that'll be fine. Um, Stephen, did you get the Sturt School Wood Show yesterday? Did you get to it? No, I didn't. Um, that'd be an interesting uh, thing to go along to. Uh, audio and video, great in the US. Um, slightly faster, yes. I talk too fast, that's the problem. <laughs> Greetings from the UK. Um, everything's good. Uh, have you considered Patreon for funding support? I would definitely support you. Jason, look, I've thought about that and I've thought about it. The thing is, I'm extremely busy with everything that I do and trying to set up a Patreon account is one of those things that I, I would like to do. Now, if you want to support me, there's another way of doing it. And Basically, all of the money that you pay will come straight to me. There's, there's, it doesn't get shaved off. See, with all these other ways of being supported, everyone wants their cut. So I'll tell you the easiest way. If you want to support me, go and buy my plans on Etsy. There should be a link there somewhere in one of my boxes somewhere. Buy the plans. I think 20 cents goes off to Etsy. I get the rest. So you don't have to buy, you don't even have to download the plans. If you want to do it, that's fine. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm getting I'm getting messages coming through here as well. That's fine. So if you if you if you feel obliged to support me, that's that's way one way you can do it. I will look into Patreon because I know a whole heap of other YouTubers do it, and uh, they all reckon it's great. And you know, maybe I should. What's the next thing? Okay, hi Dave. Where is Barry? Barry is sound asleep <laughs> on the on the lounge up in the house. He's out like a light. He's very old. He's 12 and a half years old, but he's, yeah, I'll tell you what, everyone, Barry's legs are looking to be slightly better. I've taken him along to the vet a few times recently and they've put him on a little bit of turmeric. So do you know turmeric is an anti-inflammatory? So he seems to be, whilst it's not great for his digestive <laughs> system, you can read between the lines there, it's looking like it's doing well. Um, also, we tried glucosamine and the vet was saying that hasn't actually been proven yet, but he said that Turmeric definitely has been proven. So he seems to be walking around and we had all his nails clipped and he's getting around like a little puppy and likes to play games again. Very slow, but he still does it. Um, uh, every job deserves a new tool in my house. Yes. Uh, reading through, I'm going to punch this up a little bit larger so I can see it. Okay, that's a whole lot better. Hey Dave, where's Barry? Got it. Morning Dave. Uh, hello from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Box 185. Hello from the UK, Greg Begeni, MDF or plywood for standing bench. You can use either. If you're going to use it inside, do it in MDF. It's going to be cheaper. If you use plywood, <clears throat> there's all different types of plywood you can use. I've suggested to some people they use form ply. You know, it's going to be 17 millimeters instead of 19 millimeters, but it won't be that hard to make the changes as you're going along. Uh, Balmy evening in Central Florida. Jason, well said, thanks. Not a problem at all. Um, Planty, don't, Dave, don't change anything. Sound is good in Melbourne. I can recommend Patreon. Okay, well, there you go. I might have to look into Patreon more. If people are interested in doing it for me, that's fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm humbled that anyone would suggest that, yes, they want to give me money. 
uh, I do this because I like to share information. Okay, now let's have a look at the program and let's start off with Michael Christopher, seeing he's there waiting. And I need to open the, I, the glasses will go on and off all the time. So Bob Lewin, you go and stand in the corner. You have been late. I need a note from your mum. <laughs> That's a bit dangerous. I hope you still got a mum. Anyway, and I'll let you know when you can come back out of the corner. Okay, so here we go. We're going to run Michael's thing now. So Michael says, hi, Dave. Um, project, the project is a thimble display clock and hands. And not on due to lady wants to paint. So I just primed. The thimble holders are turned out of Jarra and are dowel drilled and fitted and glued into the back. Second one is a three tier thimble stand. Third is some turned out of an eight millimeter dowel to stuff the arm and legs of the bear. My wall template it is always growing faster than the jobs I make people for. Now, I didn't include that third one uh, because it wasn't on the email that I received. So not to worry. That's a thimble stand. How clever is Michael for doing that? And that'll be great. If the lady thinks that's what she wants and, and uh, Michael can deliver, I reckon that's fantastic. I come back here to this one and we're still there. So what do you reckon? Give Michael a little bit of a, a round of applause. I reckon that's fantastic because he does, he is battling a little bit to keep moving around and uh, things slow him up. After two weeks in the corner, you're, Bob's in and you're out. Um, okay, good morning, Govinda. How are you? What's the next thing we'll do? Uh, the next one I will do, I talked about animals in the shop. Animals in the shop. Where are we? Now, this is not an animal in the shop. This is a line checking helicopter. So this was very, very close. Came straight over the top of John Lafferty's shed down in Canberra. And, uh, you know... When they used to come around my way as well, and they probably still do. And I thought at the beginning they were police looking for uh, marijuana plantations down in the bush. I used to just point down the valley and say, not here, not here. <laughs> uh, where are we? Back to me again. So John, thanks for sending that in. And I have another one. Um, another one, another one here from Brett. Father Brett Guthrie over in Western Australia. And this is his cat, Oscar. Uh, blessings, Dave. I'm doing up my dust system in my workshop and our Oscar came in for a visit. Now, wouldn't you reckon Oscar is possibly a little over equipped in the fur department for living in the middle of Western Australia where it gets cooking hot? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, good on you, Oscar. And thanks for that, Brett. Where are we up to now? Uh, Old Plank Woodworks, a couple of rounds of applause. Rag tied. Dear David, please excuse Rag for being late. Thank you. No, no, Rag, it's not happening. You can go tell Bob he's got out early. Sit down at front row, front where I can keep an eye on him. And you go into the corner for another five minutes and I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, where are we? Michael, thanks. That's fine, Michael. Now, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Last viewers project. Let's jump into that. And this is Phil Knight. And we'll flick this over here and I'll do a little chat now. It's a fair bit in this one. Hi, Dave. Thanks for the great live shows on Sundays. Can't believe the parallels between some of the things that you discuss or have as projects and some of my own. Uh, from your show on Sunday, well, let's forget that. We'll move along to the next part. A while ago, you discussed uh, upgrading your overhead dust collection using the source up collection kit. I could not find which broadcast, but it was I was able to do exactly the same modification to my saw without having to make a completely new split arriving knife. It was really brilliant in action, just a pleasure to use. I've been using some of the micro jig gripper splitters, zero play miter bars and push blocks for a few years now and find them brilliant to clean the gripper. Simply soak it in an aluminium barbecue tray filled with some rubbing alcohol for a few minutes and it will be as new grippy once more. Um, add pictures of the four sides of my mobile drawer sets. I've yet to add drawer fronts, but I think the pocket holes still look good. Space is a premium in my garage. And we'll come back to this picture here. Okay. No, no laughing in the corner there, Ragtai. You'll be there for another five minutes. Okay, I'm going to read another little bit here. Um, I've used, also purchased the Path Dogs 
both small and large with the track clips and have yet to decide on my version of the Stanton bench suits my small workshop regards Phil. Now Phil's also put in a comment there regarding the local tools group, uh, the traditional tools group for people of similar similar ilk. Uh, their annual tool sale on Sunday the 25th. This is a great source of used hand tools at excellent prices and is also a chance to talk to like-minded people and draw on their great depth of knowledge and expertise. And as I was saying, that's at the brick pit of Thornley. It used to be a brick quarry. Now there's a big sports center. It built like an indoor uh, stadium basketball and netball in this massive hole in the ground. So, and there's a driving range beside it, I think. So you see, as you're going along Pennant Hills Road, there's all this very tall netting to stop the golf balls coming into your windscreen and your car as you're driving along. Okay. All right, Ragtie, you can come out of the corner. Sit down here beside uh, Bob and everything will be forgiven. Well, look, I've kicked through all of those. So how about we swing over to the other camera? Now, while I'm doing this other part on the Western saws and the Japanese saws, you won't be seeing me. I've got the camera set up, so it's going to be coming down from the top. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. But before... <laughs> yeah, let's do that. And then I'll come back over to here and then we'll go back over there again. We'll mix it up a little bit this time. There we go. I'm over there now. Now, if you want to get a... Um, that book on antique tools or old woodworking tools. Phil Knight said that he bought a uh, encyclopedia. I put a link in the description box for where you can get that. Now you can see this is Arthur's old Diston saw and this is a typical Western style saw. It's a beautiful old thing I haven't sharpened it. I've been very slack, but it's got the, the skew back on it. It's lovely. And also I've got his uh, tenon saw, which is also a Western style. So that's, that's it there. Very, very nice old saw. Now, when I say Western style, which the thing with a Western style saw, and I'll grab one of the other ones here because it'll be easier to show. I'll bring it up nice and close. You might notice that the teeth are designed for me to push the saw away from me. And the blade, let me get it back into position. Come on, you can do it. There. The blade has considerable thickness. All right, and a set. Right, now, the whole thing with a Western saw, it's designed to cut on the push stroke. Some of them will also do a little bit of cut on the pull stroke, but it's on the push stroke is where they cut. The tenon saw, same thing. It's on the push stroke. Now you'll notice with this tenon saw, it's got a very, very heavy brass spine. That's because it's designed to cut mortise and tenon joints. So it's to cut the tenons. That's why it's called a tenon saw. Or dovetails, it would do the same. The the distan, of course, you can see it bowing all over the place. I don't do that too much with Arthur's old saw because I'm scared it's not going to come back from the edge. Let's see if I can get this one to sing. Now, if you've been watching YouTube at all, and heaven forbid you haven't been watching my channel, you've been watching another one called Wintergarten, W-I-N-T-E-R-G-A-T-E-N. This guy is just amazing. Now he plays a saw with a bow in the last episode. So have a look, do a little bit of a search for him and see what's happening. Let me see if I can get a piece of timber here and we'll see if we can ball something right up with actually cutting it. I'm going to show you an interesting little thing. Okay, this is a piece of cypress pine. Not too hard. Yeah, they should be in a frame. Well, they are. Normally, if you have a look at my workshop tours, you'll see that I have those two saws on the wall. And I've got a picture of Arthur down the end there as well. So how I do this, glasses on to start, is I line it up. Now, someone said to me, Dave, I'll turn it around sideways so you can see. They said, Dave, you're touching the saw with your thumb. And I always put my thumbnail 
against the side of the saw, not against the teeth. And I don't put my thumb pad, it's the nail comes just above the teeth as I start to guide the saw in. So I'll turn it around this way, push it up. Now, again, before I'm getting ahead of myself, this is a bench hook. It has a piece of timber at the bottom and a piece of timber at the top. It's designed to hook over the edge of a piece of, uh, over the bench, as I've got it on the Stanton bench at the moment. And did I mention, you can buy plans for this <laughs> before I get Patreon happening. Okay, so you lean on this. And so I'm pushing, I'm pushing this direction against that. All of my body weight, except for what's standing on my feet, of course, but all the top, my upper torso is the weight is pushing that way. So I'm pushing this against the bench. I'm pushing against there. I'm holding it in position. My thumb is at the ready. You can see it there. And I will come back slightly. And I hold with my finger there. And I start the cut. <laughs> Stop it there. See the thickness of the cut? I'll bring it up closer for you. That's substantial in thickness. And the reason it's there is this blade has to have thickness to so it doesn't deflect as I'm pushing it through the cut. Japanese saws are totally the opposite. Now this is a Japanese saw with a spine. So I could use this also for cutting dovetails. The blades are so much thinner. Okay. The reason being, it's designed to cut on the pull stroke, not on the push stroke. It's not cutting on the pull stroke. Now I will do a cut, but before I do, I can, I can use the, the bench hook for it because remember all of my weight, what happened there? Did the camera move? It must be from the timber being cut. There we go. Is that better, guys? Great videos of Cruise. Keep it up. Wally from Sterling Heights, Michigan. How are you? I'm very well. The Kransky sisters, uh, since then, not gone. Okay. Playing the Western sword. Yes. All right. So I can, because all of my weight is leaning on this, and the saw is a very fine saw in comparison to the Western saw, I can still use the bench hook like this. Again, I use the same system. <laughs> but not as effectively. I'm going to show you the difference in the thickness of the kerf. Whoop, there. Western saw one side, Japanese saw much thinner on the other side. Now here's another little trick. You can turn the bench hook around. You can put the timber in here and hold it there. So now on the pull stroke, I'm pulling it towards the hook. Notice it didn't wobble at all that time. It's just one of those little interesting things. You can play around with these ideas. Look at this, what's this? Dust. Come on, come on, we can't be doing that. Now, I have a few other Japanese saws. This one, I love my folding saws. Now, why do I like these? I can throw these in my toolbox and not worry about damaging. I can't do that with this. I've got to be extremely careful with this one. I can change the blade in this. And you can see also, that's one of the things with the Japanese saws, the blades. Let me see if it's going to get a focus. Let me run it along that way. There. Just, oh, it's hard to... I'll put my finger right on that point. See, it's missing a few teeth. They're very fine. That's one of the downfalls of it. Um, you don't know why your comments are being split. Well, I've no idea, Govinda. Um, maybe you should go and stand in the corner. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the folding saw. This one, I push down on here, which releases it. Don't go over. And there you go. And that is a very, very... Very, very, very nice saw, my friend. Close it up, same thing. And again, yes, you can change the blade. And the, how you do with that is I will put this here and I'll show you. With the saw upside down and locked, you do that. And out she comes. You see just here, that's a section ready for it to go into. 
Now, putting it back in, line it up over that hole, and it's the same kind of thing. I hold it steady. Be careful when you're changing these. You don't want to cut yourself. If it twists, that, that won't be any good. Doug Marriott. Marriott. Hi, Dennis Bronson. I was in Sterling Heights back in 91 to videotape the World Championships of off-road RC buggies. Well, there you go. We've got so many talents. Okay, close her up. <clears throat> and there you go. That's that one. Now, this one is a pruning saw. Now, you may think, oh, well, that's not a Japanese saw, Dave. This is the one that I use for pruning, but it's also a very good coarse crosscut saw. That thing is great. Now, the reason it's good for pruning is see the thickness of these gullets. Those little spaces between the teeth are called gullets. So that's where the sawdust goes to during the cut, and it's supposed to fall out after the timber comes out uh, sorry, after the blade comes out of the timber. So as you're pulling it along, it, it's pulling timber out of there and drops off. Now, if you try and cut a tree with this one, because the teeth are much finer, you'll find that the, the gullets get filled up and don't release. And then what happens is they fill up so much that the teeth aren't actually getting a bite. They're gliding over the top. So with trees that are still green it's very soft and a very fibrous and it just gunks things up that's why they use a very very coarse blade in that situation okay so that is a lovely saw and i think that might be just about it on those saws so let's get back to a couple of other interesting things from the week so i'm going to switch cameras again and we've still got plenty to talk about. That's not just going from there to there. I'm going to switch this back to there. Here I am back again. I can have a quick drink. Okay. An Aussie steak knife, eh? All right. Now, I don't, I'm not watching the stream, so if you guys can let me know if there's a few people here. If anyone's doing a thumbs up or a thumbs down, hopefully not. Um, that's great. If you do the thumbs up, it's... It's nice. <laughs> I like to see it. Um, I've got to be honest. Who wouldn't? Now, the next thing. Things from the week. All right. Now, I mentioned that it's been hot. I'm going to show you something here. This is at my place, and I'm going to run this little video. This is the fountain that I built. This is how hot uh, it is today. The year, last year. Look and at it was all so the hot. Bees. Look at all the bees. What they do is they come in. They're everywhere. And they even collect down here water. At sandstone. Trying to get some water. Take it back to the hive. Take back to the hive to cool it down. Amazing. Some didn't make it. Look at these guys. It's been hot. 43 degrees. So what do you think of that? It's amazing. I love to learn these things as you're going along through life. Most people would say, bloody bees. Only nine thumbs up. Come on, guys. You can give me some more than nine thumbs up. Um, you're right, Dave. I'm pretty sure they use them at Outbacks. <laughs> okay, William Smith. I have honeybees and they never go to the water source I provide. They always go someplace else. Well, they fly over to my joint. I'm telling you now, that's where they're coming to. Um, did you wear your... Why are you splitting, <laughs> splitting all of your comments up, Govinda? Every time you hit that, enter to go to a new line. I think you're posting. Uh, that could possibly be it. Now, I found out that uh, what happens is the bees take water back to, their, to the entrance of their hive. And they have a whole series of bees lying across the entrance to the hive, into the gate of the hive, basically. And they flap their wings. And that's their air conditioning. That's, that's just amazing. Now, there are so many bees coming. And it gets frustrating, though, because I'll be sitting there. And my wife's a little bit of a, uh, 
uh, can't stand to see anything suffer. So any time a bee lands in the water, because they try and land on that floating duckweed in the fountain. So she's, we'll be sitting down having a glass of wine and she, oh, I've got to rescue a bee. So she gets a leaf, picks the bee up, puts it on a plant and then sits down for about two seconds. And, oh, another one. So <laughs> do you guys, do you guys ever have anything like that uh, with with your spouse at all? I'm, I'm talking about women as well here, whether you have that happen with your spouse. Um, you know, I'm, you have to remember that when I say guys, it's it's a, a unisexual comment. I call all my daughters, you guys, what are you guys up to? Uh, so don't please don't take offense. Um, where are we? Uh, just had 100 viewers too. Wow, that's pretty cool. Keep on coming up. I'm, I'm going to do some more stuff. I'm going to use reference measuring tools in a minute. So it's something for you to watch. But I thought you might be interested in that thing about the bees. Let me have a look down here, see if I've got anything else. Okay, so oh, this is the book. This is the book that I was talking about that um, Phil Knight re recommended to me that he bought after I showed some stuff books last week. So I've put a link in the description box for that book as well. If you're interested, Phil reckons it's fantastic. I think it's around the $27 mark US only if you're interested. And we'll throw up this one here as well. So for people that came in late, this is the traditional tools group uh, having their yearly sale or meeting, whatever you want to call it. Uh, next thing, here we go. This was during the week. I just finished off doing a whole heap of work in one of the buildings here. And I came out, I, I, the CapEx is under a, um, under a canopy when I take it places. I do a pop-up candidate and there you go. It was uh, looking pretty spectacular. So I thought, how cool is that? I was going to try and get a James Bond film, you know, in Goldfinger where James is laid out on the table and the industrial laser is about to cut him up through the groin. But uh, I decided not to. I thought my picture was going to be prettier than prettier than that. And uh, so what do you think? CapEx looks quite nice. Oh, the books that I have. That's the one that I got. Dictionary of Woodworking Tools by Salomon. And the other one I've got is this one. Oh, well, I've got a couple more, but this one also was referred to me by one of the subscribers. So that's great. As I say, I keep like doing this stuff because it's a real community uh, where people, like-minded people, like all of us here, I'm guessing, have an interest. And if we can help each other along, that's fantastic. Just use me as a medium. You know, not no Ouija board involved, just my show you chat to each other on the side as well in the in the chat box go for it i haven't got a problem with that at all help each other out um what's the other thing i've got there i think i think oh no well you know what day it was during the week don't you it was valentine's day and i was on the way home from work and i thought you know what i'll grab some flowers for my girl and it was great see the smile on her face i thought yeah, I should do this more often. But if you do it all the time, you'd lose the appeal, wouldn't you? So I don't know. What Do you guys have any thoughts about Valentine's Day, whether or not you should be um, spoiling your better half? Remember, I was a non-sexual here. Your better half. Um, I don't use terms like, well, I try not to use terms like partner, husband or wife because... It's, some people take offense at it, you know, I don't have a problem with calling my wife my wife uh, or my partner, it doesn't matter. I try, try and pick the words for the company I'm in. Anyway, um, okay, let me have a look here at the chat box. Uh, okay, not sport, no way, David, I got that book. Uh, box 185, would you please repeat your email address? Okay, Dave Stanton fans at gmail.com. Now, if you have a look down in the description box again, as I say, if the video on your phone, if you run your phone this way, not this way, you'll see the video will be up the top and just below it should be some things. And you might be able to expand that out. If you're on an ordinary computer or a laptop, just below where it says show more, click that. There'll be a link to this book, to that encyclopedia. Just below that link, there'll be a show more. Click that and it'll open it all up. You can slide down through there and you'll see the email address, Facebook. And if you're interested, you can join our Secret Society, Dave Stanton Livestreams Facebook page. And that's all good fun. Okay, sliding back through here. Uh, Taleb Hussain, no way, my wife is a killer. 
Um, I'm starting a pollinator garden in my new house this year, South Carolina. Good on you, Jason. How cool is that? Uh, okay, coming back down through here. 60 thumbs up. Hello from Quebec, Canada. Well, thank you very much for letting me know that, Marcus. And uh, where are we? Lost Wits. Well, we learned about the birds and the other week, why not about the bees too? Exactly right. Use differ flowers throughout the year. Her favorite on Valentine's Day. Ah, oh, you're very considerate. Now, if you think I'm looking up over and being strange, for people who haven't watched, I've got my monitor up on the wall. So it's a big old flat panel TV that lives in the shed here with me. I just find it's a whole lot easier because I can walk around all of the shop and still keep an eye on what's happening. So I've got the camera lined up looking at you, but I'm looking just slightly over the top when I'm reading the chat. Uh, let's get talking about woodworking. Okay, Romeo, if you hadn't been here, uh, if you've probably been here earlier, I have done the woodworking and I'm about to do it again. But this is part of the show. It's, as I said at the beginning, it's a, um, it's a, it's very informal. It's chat. It's some woodworking and, you know, just general interest from the week. Okay. Zane, uh, SPFL works best shopping partner for life. Yep. Uh, Hello, Dave. Greetings from Malta, uh, New York, balmy 30 degrees with snow. Ragged, I would ask politely if it's possible for you to leave these live chats up for a couple of days. I can get into it all the time for medical reasons. I just love them. Okay. Now, I leave this show on my channel for a week. I normally take it down after the next week has been done. The chat, I can't leave there. Sometimes I can copy the chat and paste it in in a couple of sections underneath. You know, it, it happens now and then. But honestly, it's something I would like YouTube to be able to leave the chat in a section below and, and stay there. There's comments for the whole show. Um, okay, Govinda, message retracted. Steve Ince, hey, Sir David finally figured this phone to be able to write. Well, welcome, Steve Ince. Now, Steve is a... a um, a character who owns more festival than God. <laughs> but he's very happy with it and he does an awful lot with it. So he's a hell of a talent. And also he's got a little bit of a Facebook page happening as well. So maybe Steve can pop that up there so we can see that as well, Steve. If you'd like to do that, just throw a link up there for it, Steve, so people can come in and have a look at it. Um, hello from Maryland. Kev Steer, hey, down under from you. What are you doing up, Kevin? It's too late. Zane, all the arrows Steve gets confusing. My biggest issue is getting the stream up at the beginning. Well, thank you kindly. Anyways, not a problem, Ragtry. Let's get back over to this next uh, demonstration I'm going to do. I shall move this to here. Um, and I nearly pushed the stop streaming button. That would have been terrible. There we go. Back over there. And a little drink on the way. All right. Before I get into the next part, I'll show you another saw that I own. And this is called a flush cut saw. Now this, I'll bring it up close so you can have a look. It has, let me put my hand behind it, that might make it work better. Teeth that have no set. Okay, it's got a coarse side, and a fine side. So this is the coarse side, this is the fine side. Now I can put this, let's come back to here. I can put this on my bench and I am not marking that bench at all because there is no set. In other words, all the teeth are in line with the actual blade itself. Now these things are designed for cutting dowels off. If I had a piece of dowel in here, let's do something that's gonna make John Lafferty cringe. Let's say I had one of John's beautiful dogs there and I needed to cut that down. Well, I would get this saw and I'd go, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, John, don't panic. <laughs> and then cut from the other side and it would give me a flush cut and then I can sand that down. So these things, also Japanese design, they're a pull cut. Okay, so that they pull towards you. So there you go. I hope, I hope that has helped some people out with uh, identifying different types of saws and of course this is a panel saw and this is a tiny little jack saw yep. cross cut panel rip there's all different types of western saws the same with the 
um, Japanese saws, all different types. Red hook out of the way. All right, who's this character here? I'm going to bring it all over so we can have a look. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that a guy called Andy sent me a few things, and I'm going to pop them all down here so you can see them. And I'm going to read this a little bit as well. Okay. Uh, basically, Andy says, uh, I'm always happy to be showing my tools around what you have in mind. And I said, look, I've, I've seen these internal measuring things. And so he sent me some other things that also reference. So this one here, just quickly, it's got a hole in the center between these two pins. Now, I'm sure you've seen this kind of thing happen before. You put it down on the piece of timber and you just pull it to the side. And then if you were to drag it along with something in it, it's normally designed for a pencil. I'm going to use, I guess you guys call this a Sharpie. I call it a permanent marker. I'm going to drop that in there. And that is dead center. It's working off reference. He's got three different sizes, so I can use that. Obviously, it's not going to be as good on a skinny piece. And he's got this little short one, but it's too short because it's going to jam as you, as you move it along. So this is designed for, for very skinny stuff. Like if I was to do it on this piece of timber here, you can see, yeah, nice, easy motion. If I hold it that way, it's going to be better. Now, Andy's um, Easy Wood Shop is the name of his business. E-Z-W-O-D-S-H-O-P.com. Put his business card up there for him. At least I can do is show him, show everyone what he does and his link. And there's no affiliation between me and Andy. It's just I got in touch with him and said, buddy, how about I show a couple of these things on my show for you? And he said, yep, love it. Now, here's one that I really like. This one. This is really cool. You might wonder what the hell it is. It is for marking the center of a panel so that if you've got a piece of three quarter inch, or should I say 19 millimeter piece below, it's going to go onto it and it's going to be centered. So here it is. Let's say there's a piece of three quarter inch ply. Now say I was going to screw that to the underside of this bench. Let's pretend this is the bench now. I'm doing this a little bit khaki handed, but bear with me, you'll, you'll see what it does. It is so cool. I love it. Um, and so simple. Often, how do you find... Do you guys feel that sometimes it's the simple things in life that are best? I'll spin it around this way. Here we go. Three pins across the back. I'm going to put it against there. And if I slide that along, there's a hole there. And I'll put the pen in there so you can see what happens. This is so easy. Now that line, my friends... Is three eighths of an inch from the edge of the board. So now I have a perfect line to drill holes and countersink and know that if I'm going to be making a cabinet out of three quarter inch stock, that is going to be the center of the piece that I'm going to be putting on underneath here. Brilliant. Now, obviously, you don't have to do it with a marker. You can do it with a pencil and you can just do the spots where you want it. You know, just a dot, 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 dot as you're going along. I thought that was really, really clever. Now, yes, you can do it with a, where is it? With, with a combination square or with a marking gauge. So I could set this at three eighths of an inch, like so and do the same kind of thing. But I haven't got the same kind of control as I'm pulling it along. It might bump. With this one, it's got the outriggers either side, so it's it's going to be held stable. And it's a round, round cylinder there instead of a flat reference point. So this will ride the edge a whole lot better. So that's pretty clever. So we got that. What else have we got? I think that was all of his uh, markers. How about we try it on a bit of... This is a bit of northern silky oak. Now, I'm not going to use the black pen on that one, but you can see. Let's see if I've got a pencil. Oh, also in the area where you put your pencil in, 
it's conical. So as you put your pencil in, not that one, because that one's blunt, where you put the pencil in, it's going, it's not going to break. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. Can you see that? I'm hoping so. Works well. So I can, for wider pieces of timber, I can see that line. You guys won't be able to. Believe me, it's there. All right. What's the next thing? Steve's making comment about car aerials. Yes. Now these things are designed. Let me get a tiny, tiny one. I mean, have a quick look. Next week we'll be giving out numbers for entry to the corner. <laughs> How many? We got more people are late, are they? Uh, stolen car aerials. That's why you see so many coat hanger aerials. Okay. This thing pulls apart, as Steve was saying, like a car aerial. So that will do an internal measurement. And I was using this the other day. I was replacing some skirting boards. I wasn't using this one. I was using this one. Now this is two big fellows and they can screw together like this. And I'll show you <laughs> how far they open up to. Okay, from there to there. So the Stanton bench is four feet long and that's the length of one section. Now it reminds me of Star Wars and the Sith. I can keep pulling that one out that side. Now that is just underneath from the floor, from the floor down here up to my dust line. That's huge. And you can have them with that kind of an end, which is flat. So I measured in between cabinets when I was doing some skirting boards or a lot of people will call them baseboards. They also have these points. I'll grab some of these out. Man, oh man, Andy's getting his value out of me, isn't he? So I have a similar thing, exactly the same, but with a point on the end. So I can go into a corner. Now, this will be only good up to, and this is an inf information you might want to sit here. So there it is. There, see the point? Now notice that it is not a 90 degree. It's slightly less than a 90 degree. I think it's about 70 degrees, that total angle, which would be about 35 either side, which means it's limited as to measuring an internal. I could measure a four by three ratio. So I could, that will go into that corner. And this panel is around four by three in, uh, in ratio. Getting down to six by two, nah, it's not gonna get there because the edge is gonna bump on the point. But I'll tell you what, for the 99% of the time, that's probably going to be just fine. So there you go. That's from um, Easy Woodshop. And I've got to say thank you to Andy for doing that for me because he hasn't asked me to send them back. He says, Dave, you can have them. They're all yours. You want to show them, show them. And remember, a lot of the time, if someone sends something to me and I don't like it, um, well, I'm not going to show it. Now, one of the things that Steve made comment was, these things don't tend to hold too well. If they bump, they're going to move along. So what I do is I make sure that the piece of timber that I'm going to cut, I lay it out already on the saw, ready to go. So I'll just walk out of the room with this pulled to whatever length it needs to be, sit it down on the timber, line the edge up, and I'll get my pencil and mark the end straight away. I don't want to put this down anywhere. The first time it's got to go straight onto the wood. All right. Let's have a bit of a read on the chat. I think that's about everything that's going to be happening as far as the demonstrations are concerned. But give me a second, I'll have a look. Switch this back over to there. Quickly looking around. Um, ah, I do have some of these. These are from John. These are his cam clamps that he sent up to me. These are designed for going on the Stanton bench. He's made a whole heap of different types of 20 millimeter dogs and he does them in three quarter inch as well. So he's even print, he prints these on a 3D printer and he's printed an eight millimeter thread into the end. It's just printed by the machine. It's like, zzz, away it goes. There it is. Okay, Bruce, hello from Richmond VA. Steve, okay, John Lafferty, get on to making some for 16 millimeter melamine. 
Okay, making what, Steve, for 16mm melamine? You've got me interested. John and Steve are in the background up to some kind of a shenanigan. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. Maybe I don't. Do you get that? You think, oh, I've got to sneeze. And then you go to sneeze and you've done all the excuses and then nothing. <laughs> um, one other thing I'm going to do. I've got a project on at the moment that I'm building drawers for this bench. So this assembly table I built as the infeed table for my table saw and it works beautifully. Underneath I created carcasses that I thought you know would be able to be sufficient for me to do a number of things. I've got a drawer here that works great you know you can't see it but there's a drawer there. Um, and I'm coming up with some ideas for drawers for this side of the unit and that's the subject of my next video I hope. So I did a heap of filming yesterday and I'm going to have to do more. I can't film this Saturday because I'll be working down at Carbotec as I mentioned with the saw stop demonstration. Uh, so if you want to rock up to that it's uh, all of the Carbotec stores in Australia I think are, um, are doing the saw stop demonstrations. Check with the store first if, you, if you're not uh, sure. Uh, I'll be down there doing the demonstration at the Auburn store at Sydney. Um, by all means rock up and say good day. I always like to meet people and as I say I'm going to put the manager to the task and make him <laughs> make him do the activation and uh, the first time you do it I'm the, I'll let you know the first time you do it you're you're panicking you think oh my god is this going to work what is it going to be noisy next thing you know bam <laughs> it's all done the sausage doesn't even get a scratch it's amazing all right uh F1, uh, I'm just reading this Formula One racing cars have many 3D printers. 3 one printers probably wouldn't. No, they probably wouldn't. Mate, our John Lafferty can do anything on his 3D printer. He's great. Oh, he's, he is great. Very, very good with his printer. He could probably even print these. You know, I'm not suggesting that he steals Easy Woods, uh, Andy's thunder, but they're a bloody clever idea. And I'm sure that Andy's got things squared away that uh, you'd be probably more economical to get his product. But anyway, I'm digressing. So draw guides or draw slides, whatever you want to call them. I will be using these ones. Now these are King Slide soft close draw slides. Now these are only 300. I've got some 600s there that I'll be using on the big drawers. The 600s take 32 kilos. So that is pretty substantial. I'm going to do some nice, nice ideas. And you'll be surprised when you see and they say, I'm like, where's Dave get these ideas? I'll tell you where he gets these ideas. He lies awake at night thinking, I try to get to sleep, but I can't turn this thing off. Do any of you guys get that? You'll be lying in bed, you'll be doing a project, and your subconscious takes over in the night. My mind wakes me up at 2.30 every morning and says, hey Dave, we've just sorted this out for you. I think, would you shut up and go to sleep? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not the only person that gets that. Alrighty, um, what else? I think that's about it. So, have you enjoyed the show, guys? You know, I tried to mix it up a little bit. Um, we are in incident angles. I don't know. Yeah, Steve, I knew you would. You're thinking, which tool will I buy next and leave it in the cardboard box in the lounge room? <laughs> oh, dear. See, that's the thing about this show. We're all like-minded. I'll spin the camera around. You can see where I'm up to. So. There, that's all been milled yesterday and you know it's just beautiful and I'll tell you what those Jessam clear cut uh, table saw stock guys are fantastic. I demonstrate them a little bit in the video as well for you so and that and this after milling everything up I'll show you how much dust came out of my saw. Now I've milled a fair bit. There you go I have not touched the floor. That's it. How cool is that? More beer required. Okay, so there you go. You've got a quick look at the, a preview of what's going to be coming. Okay, guys, I think I might wind it up a little bit. Uh, let me see, how are we doing there? King Slides are very good. I've used them on a number of jobs. Yep, Dave M, great show, Dave, thanks. Uh, Michael Christopher's when doing draws 600 deep, what length runners are you gonna use? I'm doing, I've got a 630 deep carcass. I'm using 600 runners because they're full extension. That's the part that's got the three sections in. That's what these are. And uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I think um, 
so my drawers actually come just out of the cabinet you know only a sparrow but they do what do we got happening here Aaron hey Dave first time actually watching live and another great show thanks Aaron uh, Carl John was claiming to be an innocent angel William Smith good show and always a laugh to be had thanks Dave not a problem Steve I guarantee it'll be a big show stopper uh, lost wits oh yeah I hope so that dust extraction is better than the industrial saw we have at work I keep telling people that I, I love my setup and I put a lot of it down to the saw stop bloody blade guard now Steve Innes has just put it on his machine um, he hasn't come back and told me yet how much it's affecting it whether it's much better than what he had on there before or whether it's you know just ho-hum I don't know I like to get the response and I don't like people to pad things out for me to, and do a soft because I say something's good and they say ah oh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll be kind to Dave yeah, no, don't be kind to Dave tell Dave the truth Dave likes to hear the truth okay um, Steve H always another great show thank you for all you do have a fun time next week at your show and we'll see you in two weeks well no you will see me next Sunday I'm doing the show on a Saturday as in Australian Saturday time next Sunday the live show will still happen so you guys have got to remember we're 17 hours ahead of you guys in the States if you're in the States okay so I'll still be I'll still have the live show here it's the day before is when I release a video normally on a subject where you guys aren't invited you can watch it after you're not involved in the actual show so uh, that'll all be happening all right guys anyone who's in the corner you can come out now and uh, collect your hat and coat on the way out the door <laughs> okay thanks Carl uh, Richie great show Dave thanks off to bed now I'll catch you later Richard Longstaff uh, Gene Case thanks Sue B great show Dave 99 okay guys thank you very much for watching and I shall see everyone next week don't miss out or drop down to the store at Carbotech as I say and meet me in person if you want if you haven't done so see you later